Hey guys, this is Tom. I have a very detailed audio post-production video for anybody who wants to learn how to clean up voice recordings in Isotope RX. Uh, I have Isotope RX 10. I'm sure some of you watching this, they'll be on like 11 or 12. The principles and techniques should apply no matter what version you have, pretty much all the way back. I was on version 7 up until I think um, last year, so not much changes. They add a couple things here and there, but the basic tools are always the same. And we're going to go through different types of uh, noises that you'll run into with production dialogue recordings. Sometimes you'll find issues with ADR or voiceover recordings too, but most of you here are going to be interested in production sound, like dialogue recordings. So we're going to go over a bunch of different, let's see how many examples, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's say nine. There's going to be more. Uh, some of you will never have to deal with any of these. You'll have perfect recordings. But for each one, I'm going to show you which module to use in Isotope RX and how to get it to Isotope, how to get it back. And then um, I use shortcuts in Isotope to really speed up the workflow. So first of all, let me go over that because that is something that will save you hours of time. If you go to keyboard, you can you can set up shortcuts for, you know, like D-click. And the prob one problem with this is you have to type it exactly. Uh, is it that? No. And some of them aren't what you'd expect. So D-click has no spaces, which is fine. So apply D-click, you, you can see I have that mapped out to keyboard shortcut one. If you have a Stream Deck or some other fancy gadget, you can do that as well. But, you know, keyboard's right here at hand, so I like to assign them to the top number keys on the keyboard. Um, so I've got that. Let's look at Spectral Repair, which is one I use probably the most. Uh, not Spectral Denoise, but Spectral Repair. Uh, I've got different shortcuts. You can see Replace I've got on 4, and Attenuate I've got on 3. Another one I use is Decrackle. Uh, I actually use that more than any of the D-click modules. It's great for mouth clicks, and it's also good for just the little weird production ticks that happen um, with like lav mics, boom mics, pretty much any mic. There's going to be these tiny little transients. So you see I have that set to 2 on my keyboard. And I think I have D-hum set to... See, this is where... You have to type it exactly. It's not that. Okay, remove hum. It's not dehum, it's remove hum. Uh, I have that mapped out to the equal sign. And there's though there will be more. I've got, I think, all 10 or 11, 12 top row. Actually, more than that, probably. Mapped out to different things. But I kind of remember the ones I use the most. And if you set up your own keyboard shortcuts... Maybe you've got a fancy gaming keyboard that has the, the row on the side that you can use for special functions. Just set it up to where it's comfortable under your hand and you can, instead of clicking the module over here, like Dplosive or DS or whatever, just whatever the modules use the most, map them out to shortcuts that feel good under your hand so that you can go efficiently. So in Pro Tools, I've got my RX monitor set up right here. It says it's connected, so we'll be able to hear Isotope back through Pro Tools, which is great because it doesn't fight with Pro Tools for your interface. I've got my microphone that I'm recording my voice for the video here, and I've got a couple of tracks. So the tracks I have, I have one called Bad Noises, and then I have one cleaned up. So we're going to be sending these to Isotope. We're going to use individual files clip by clip. We're going to send these to Isotope deal with the issue, and then bring them back. I, I rarely will use these plugins in Pro Tools. I pretty much send everything to Connect. There's a couple reasons for that. One, even though I might think like this one's labeled Jenny Hum, let's listen to it. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So yeah, there's a Jenny Hum. That's the A1 problem with it. But there's also some mouth clicks and stuff. So instead of having five different plugins open, I just have to have one right there. And I can send it to Isotope. And I can see here, I think I've got, yeah, individual files, clip by clip, two second handles, that's fine. So I can see here, I've got a generator hum. 
multiple bands of it. It's not just like 60 hertz or 120 hertz. There's all kinds of harmonics. And what I found works great for pretty much any of them, even actually better than Absentia DX is what I, that's what I used to use. The DHUM module and Isotope, I think probably nine or 10, they changed it. The adaptive mode works really well, super transparent. Doesn't tend to cut into these low fundamentals as much as um, Absentia actually. Uh, Absentia will probably keep updating their algorithms because they're really good on development. But just for the sake of keeping everything in Isotope, I tend to use DHUM. So what's great about this, the adaptive mode, you don't have to learn anything, you just hit render and the hum is greatly reduced. It's not taken all the way out, but I have my settings pretty low. So let's just listen to a before and after. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over. Great, so let's render it. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over. So you can hear there's a little bit of gating going on, and I might actually undo that and bring the sensitivity down. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over. So that's good. I'd say that got out like 50, 60 percent, but there's still some stuff left behind. So I can always hit it with dehum again, and I'm going to use my shortcut this time and hit the uh, equals key. And you'll kind of hear what that does. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over. So I'm pretty sure what Isotope does to keep it from biting into these, these words, these fundamentals, the dialogue that I don't want to touch. I think what they're doing, you can see here, it's like there's a gate involved with the dehum. And so you can hear it breathing with the words. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over. So that might be good enough uh, for for some people. I'm going to go back one step, and I'm actually going to deal with these on their own. What I like to do with a hum like this, instead of using spectral repair, is I will go to deconstruct. And I'm trying to remember if I have deconstruct. I'm not. Some of these modules, they like don't have apply deconstruct what do I, I have that set to five okay yeah because i use that one a lot too so i'm actually just selecting each uh tone for this generator and i'm knocking the tonal gain down like 22 so i'm gonna you can hit render or if you have shortcuts like me i have i'm gonna do five on my keyboard and it takes a little longer than um spectral repair but the result to me anyways it sounds a lot cleaner so i'm just going to do this to all the bands let me move this out of the way so you can see better now this one here i can see there's a word that lines up with that generator tone so i don't want to take that out so i'm going to select everything but that chances are it'll be masked the generator tone will be masked by the words, which is probably why Isotope, you know, did. Oops, I'm going to undo. That's probably why they added that kind of gating algorithm. And then here, I'm not doing this over here because this is in the handle because I recorded two, two takes for whatever reason. So I'm just going to leave that. But you can see here, the words actually go over the hum. So I'm going to have to get a little more surgical with this. So again, I'm hitting five on the keyboard. You can also click render if you want to do it the slow way. But I'm just selecting the area that I know is not going to be messed up. And I think for these, for these upper harmonics, I am actually going to reprocess with dehum. Just to save me some time. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, I have send back mapped to tab on my keyboard. So I do all this with a keyboard. I use the mouse for selecting and I use the, so right hand mouse selecting and left hand keyboard for processing and sending back. So I'm gonna hit tab and then 
what I'm going to do so we can do before and after is actually copy this down and now I can render it. So let's just listen to a before and after on the Jenny hum. The quick brown fox. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. There's still a tiny bit of gating because I did the upper harmonics with the D hum twice, but compared to the the straight up D hum, I guess just for illustration purposes, I'll show you what that would sound like. Adaptive mode, take these down, take the band up, filter cue down. So just so you can hear the difference. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. That's a combo manual and automatic. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So I know it's really subtle, but in this, we'll call this auto clean one that's straight up de hum. Um, the low end gets filtered a lot more. The quick brown fox. Sorry, that was both. Here's. This is the automatic, just straight up dehum with no manual work. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So here that low end got weird. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And the low end on that one is a lot more full. So that's why doing stuff by hand can be beneficial. So let's call that Jenny hum wrapped up. We reduce the Jenny hum, I don't know, 80, 90%. So it's pretty good. Now let's move on to our plate. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So, a lot of people would say that is completely unusable. And it might be if you could ADR that. More power to you, go for it. So, I'm actually going to copy this down before I send it. Now, now we can see one of the great things about isotope is you can see the issue, which all this stuff here, they look almost like hi-hat or, or, I don't know, really high-pitched snare drum hits. This is all plate stuff. And I know that there's handles involved, two second handles because of this setting right here. So I can actually look down at isotope and see, here's the two second mark. So the the file in Pro Tools starts right about here. I could spend time cleaning up all this stuff, but I'm lazy and I don't want to. So I'm just going to go listen to this. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox. And then it's two seconds on the tail end of it. So it's like 875. So it'd be like 675. So about here is where I need to clean up to. Lazy dog. The quick brown. Right after that. G on dog. So. Plates, silverware, a lot of different uh, percussive things that you'll find in production recordings that deal with props that the actors are using are just like a drum. They have a, a transient and they also have a tonal thing going on. There's a couple ways to deal with these. If you just wanted to reduce them, then spectral repair is going to be a good way to do that. And again, I have attenuate mapped out to three on my keyboard, which makes it very easy to just grab that and hit three. The quick brown. The problem with spectral repair is it tends to create these digital kind of swirlies. The quick brown. You can hear the high frequencies here. The quick, quick brown. The quick. They just. The, the, they just sound like digital mush. So you're left with. Okay, well, I guess I'll take them I'll try to take them all the way out the quick brown. it just doesn't it leaves a lot of the tonal stuff behind um, so spectral repair can be hit or miss on this I'm gonna undo this put it back the quick brown again kind of a secret weapon is deconstruct so the there's this separates the signal into tonal noisy and transient and you can actually like bring down the uh, both the transient and tonal if you wanted. So let me hit five to deconstruct it. The quick brown. So that's nice. That turned it down. The quick brown fox. Let's just do that to some of these that are on top of the words too. The quick brown. The key is highlighting the bad stuff and not highlighting the whole thing. Like don't just highlight the whole thing because it's not, it's going to process everything 
the words like P's, B's, all the plosives that you need to keep. And that's one reason I don't like using D click and mouth D click. Where's, where's that guy? Um, because they just process the entire signal. So you throw the baby out with the bathwater. I don't want to do that. I want to be very specific about what I'm taking out. If you're in a rush and you have to batch process files and just highlight all and, and um, mouth declick, you can do that, but you're going to be losing valuable stuff. So if you want to do a really, truly good job, a non-amateur job, then you have to go in and do these sounds kind of individually. So luckily, this guy has a low, low voice and the plates are kind of separated out. So I should be able to hit deconstruct. Quick brown fox. Quick brown fox. Quick brown. It's still pretty loud, so I'm gonna hit it again. I and I prefer doing multiple light passes with the plugin. Um, I mean, minus twenty two is pretty steep, but like Quick for brown. spectral repair, I might do, you know, three or four passes to get something sufficiently out. Quick brown fox. Quick brown fox. Quick brown fox. I'm actually gonna use D click, which is one on my keyboard. Quick brown fox. Down, 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 quick down. But the problem with that is it's taking the the sharpness out of the B. Quick down. So let me switch to spectral repair. Quick down, fox. Quick down, quick down, fox. That's taking too much out. Let's tweak our settings here. Strength down. I want to look a little bit more before this before and after waiting. You'll see this box slide. Is it going to look after for the material it's filling or before? Because all this is doing is taking this signal and turning it down based on looking at what's before it. It's trying to match the highlighted region to the non highlighted region. Quick brown fox, 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 quick brown fox. Let me see what happens if I take out this B. Quick brown fox, quick brown. It's actually not the B, it's actually, it is the plate. I'm going to turn this surrounding region down so it's not looking at this little guy here. It's just looking at that tiny piece of fill beforehand. Quick brown fox, brown fox. Okay. Fox. I guess I'll get these out. So I'm just hitting three. I switched over to spectral repair because deconstruct wasn't really doing it. Brown fox. But I might hit this with, with the uh, deconstruct. Brown fox. Fox. The reason I'm using deconstruct is because I want to leave the noisy stuff, which is going to be the F's and S's. Uh, right here, you can see this is Fox. Fox. It's the S on Fox. I don't want to take that out. And if I spectral repair this, it's going to take it out. But if I use deconstruct, see, it leaves it in. So different modules for the same sound sometimes is the way you got to go. Fox. The other Fox. thing... That can work really well. It's just copy and paste. Fox. This one, I'm not going to be able to do that because it's over the top. See, that's too much. I'm going to use deconstruct a couple times. Fox. Fox. And I still have this. I'm going to use spectral repair on that. That's below the S. Fox. It took too much out. Fox. Fox. And I need to... I'm going to use replace now. So this is mapped to four on my keyboard. I'm just switching this over so you guys can see. It's too much. Let's bring that up. Let's see if that. Fox. 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 I'm gonna actually highlight a little bit less. Fox. Fox. There we go. The quick brown fox. Jump. This one right here, it's free and clear, so I should be able to zap it out with spectral. Um, there's not really a ton of fill to use, so I'm actually going to hit it again. There's still the, the tone of the plate, so I'm going to take that out with the, uh, deconstruct module. Jump, 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 jump. Same with this. Actually, now, now that I've cleaned this up, this is the easiest way to get rid of stuff. Old school, copy, highlight, uh, shift, option V, fill paste, jump over. I can actually do the same with this. Jumped over, jumped over, jumped over, and let's use the deconstruct on this guy twice. Jumped over, once on this. Jumped over. I can now that I've got the tonal stuff out. Jumped over, jumped over, uh, jumped over. 
That's not very good. Jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over. Sometimes splitting into bands works better. Jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over. I can take this out with the click. Jumped over. Oh, that's the T. Jumped over. Jumped over. And I need to get this out. Let me see what replace does. That was spectral repair replace. Jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over. I'm just highlighting and doing different flavors of spectral repair, either attenuate or replace. Jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over. And some of these, like, you'll never get them out completely. It's just over. It's just getting them most of the way out. Over. This is probably gonna be the hardest one. Over. The lazy. That's clear. Actually, let me copy paste. Copy. Let me do that to this whole. It's probably not gonna be enough. Over. I got these little loop points in here that I don't want, so I'm gonna repair those. Over. The lazy dog. The quick. Let me move these so you guys can see. Over here. The lazy dog. This one is just like a table rattle. The lazy dog. The lazy. Here's that mouth click. The lazy dog. Right there. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit that with the crackle. Too short. The lazy dog. Good. The lazy dog. And lazy then dog. These I should be able to go to deconstruct. We'll keep the tonal up, and we'll just take the transient down. Lazy dog. Except there's a tonal element, so actually let's do spectral repair, attenuate. The lazy dog. Lazy dog. And we've got that one. Lazy dog. This one. Lazy dog. Lazy dog. Lazy dog. Lazy dog. I'm just attenuating. I'm whittling down until I get down to the nitty gritty on this stuff. Lazy dog. The quick brown. Lazy dog. Okay, and then these I should be able to just paste over. Brown okay, box. let's send it back. I know that was fast, um, but you can see the waveform's different. Some of the bumps are going to be mushy, like digital mush. They've been cleaned up too much, but it should be better. So here's before plate removal. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And here's after. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So it's much better. You can still hear the plate. It's not perfect. And there's some artifacts in there. So I would say that's a tough one. Sometimes it's about marginal improvement. So one thing you can do, which is really nice for the mixer, is you have a cleaned up one. You can label this like plate instead of all that gobbledygook cleaned up. So, you know, this top one with the plate in the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog the director is going to say what's with the plate plate's too loud turn it down and then this one the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog the director might say "Nah, that sounds a little too processed but what's great about having both is let's turn this one down 10 db and listen to them both the quick brown fox Jumped over the lazy dog. And I've done this plenty of times, um, you know, like even on big shows where you leave a note for the mixer, you know, like here, group, do a region group and say, play both. And then you just label one of them's cleaned up, one of them's raw. So they can bring in some of the raw, uncleaned up material. You know, maybe they like the sound of the plates. They just want them lowered. Well, this gives them control and you can even go one step further i keep i keep closing connect uh you can go one step further with this and let's do okay this is where it gets a little tricky so create individual files entire selection multi-input mode this is going to send it as a stereo pair but you could also do it as clip by clip and let me remember how to do it so you have to send this okay we're going to use this as the reference so use the cleaned up one as the reference track you send that and then you send the raw as the repair and now what's super cool about this 
is you, using the dbleed module, you say, okay, I want you to reference this cleaned up one with no plate, and we're gonna be processing the plate to get just the plate out of this. So it's looking at the cleaned up one as the bleed source, and it's saying, okay, I'll take the bleed source, the cleaned up one, meaning the voice, out of the, the file. So let's render. And you can see the voice, it's not all the way gone, but it's greatly reduced. So if you want to go one step further on providing the mixer some options, you can do that. So here is just the plate, or mostly just the plate. You can still hear me back there. Um, but what's nice is if you play them both together. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. It sounds just like the original which is great because, okay, let's keep the plate. Maybe we can even use it in the m and &E if we cut out the spaces. Um, and you've got the cleaned up, so you can change the, the volume. You can totally get rid of the plate if you're willing to live with some audible artifacts. You can bring it into half the level. You can do whatever you want. So that's uh, something that's really nice to do. For, always check with the mixer and make sure it's okay with them. But So we'll, we'll call that good on the plate. Moving on to this nice plastic bag here, let's have a listen. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Cool. Nice and crinkly. That was probably like the sandwich bag that was on the plate. Create individual files clip by clip. We're just going to repair this. So this is a great chance to use Decrackle. If you just want to, you know, take out pretty much all of it in one step, you can just use Decrackle. So you can, if you don't have shortcuts, you'll have to open the module and hit render. You can see my settings here. Quality set to high. Strength, I try to keep it below like 2.6. And then amplitude skew, it's going to be looking for lower level signals compared to the good voice signal. You would use a higher setting for something like cleaning up an old vinyl LP. Um, where the crackles are like the loudest thing, but usually on a production recording, the crackles are not the loudest thing unless there's a mechanical issue with like the microphone cable. So I'm going to hit two on my keyboard. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox. So that took out some of the crackles. Here's a before. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And then the quick brown here's after. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox. I basically just knocked down the like super sharp transients. So with a bag like this, you do have, you can see all these little ticks here. Uh, but you also have like the mush of the bag, which is not such a transient sound. So what I'm going to do, I noticed that the transients for the bag kind of end like about 1.5k. So this is where I'll use the regular old D-click. Um, and I'll set the frequency skew to about there. And let's do multiband random clicks. Because they are multiband. They're not just a single little tonal click. And I'm going to hit 1. And let's listen to it. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox... So it got rid of more of the transients, but the mush is still there. In fact, the mush is really annoying now because it's really all that's left. This is a good example of the mush I'm talking about. And you'll see the it's pretty wide band. It goes down, you know, 1K all the way up to 20K. A couple of ways you can deal with this. The painful, correct way to do it would be the quick brown fox to go in here and just highlight the regions that are bad. I'm actually going to use D-click again. And let me bring up the sensitivity. The quick brown the quick brown fox the quick brown that kind of works. It it turns the clicks into not clicks anymore but like little weird mushy digital sounds. The quick brown fox The other way to do it is to use D-Russell because we've turned the bag from a bunch of clicks with Russell to pretty much just Russell. So again, I'm just going to highlight the range I need to. I like to keep the D-Russell strength 
very low, like, you know, maybe 1.8 to 2 is the max I'll go unless it's really nasty. Ambience preservation, I kind of just leave it somewhere in the middle, and then separation algorithm, advanced joint channel, best quality but slowest processing. So let's see, where did I have? I think this was set to keyboard six. Yeah. So you can see it took out some. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown. Let's, now I'm going to focus more instead of doing 1K to 20K, I'm just going to do 4K to 20K. Same process again. And it's slowly whittling the signal down. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox. This one here that's free and clear, I can just highlight it and spectral repair that. Dog. The quick. In fact, I'm going to hit this again with it. The quick brown fox jumped. Now here, I can kind of start to dial into, well, where is it the worst? The quick brown fox. It's, it's bad right here at the beginning, probably because I was trying to demonstrate what to do. So I'm going to jack this sensitivity up. I'm going to bring this up a little bit and bring up the click widening. The quick brown fox jump. Quick brown. So it has turned those into mush now. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Which I'm not sure I, I can live with that. So there's a great tool to use, and a lot of people use this um, dialogue isolate tool. They just highlight the whole thing and just hammer it, and it takes noise out, and it makes the voice sound a little digital and thin. Great use for this is when you have a noise like this, it's pretty broadband, not totally broadband, but broadband enough to where D-click, spectral repair, it's not really working because you've got S's and F's. So you can take dialogue isolate and just select the band that you want. I'm going to bring it down like 7 dB. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox. Okay, let's undo that real quick. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So it did take the bag down, but it also made the voice sound dull. So it didn't really work the way I wanted it to. The quick brown. Let's go back to declicking. The quick brown. The quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use spectral repair very carefully. The quick brown. The quick. Br Maybe I can. What else can I do here? I can try a little more de-rustle right here. The, the quick, the quick brown fox jumped. There's some clicks here. Quick brown fox jumped over right there. Fox jumped. Fox jumped over. I'm gonna use spectral repair, which I have to change the before and after. Fox jumped. Fox jumped over. Jumped over. There's a sneaky one here. Jumped over. Some right there. Jumped over. The jumped over the lazy dog. So I'm just alternating between D click and spectral. The lazy dog. Spectral repair. The lazy dog. The lazy dog. But you see, I'm trying to keep the S's and F's unprocessed because spectral repair, especially, will just blow those out. The lazy dog. There's a little. Shoo, right there. Lazy dog. Lazy dog. Lazy dog. And I lost the G. Lazy dog. Lazy dog. Dog. You can see why dialogue editing is such a pain in the butt, and also why not a lot of people want to do it, because it does get tedious pretty fast. Uh, this G on dog. 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 It's not great. I might have done too much. So one nice thing about Isotope is the restore selection to initial state. I have that to shift command Z, make sure I don't do it on accident. And it whatever you have selected, it's going to throw it back to how the file originally came in. Dog. Dog. So that's why the G got obliterated because there's bad clicks right on top of it. Dog. 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 It's going to be tough. It's going to be very tough. 
but I'm gonna copy and paste. Uh, I want the sharpness of the G, but I don't want any of the stuff around it. So you can see I pasted it real tight. Dog. It's Dog. still there. That's. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to clean this one up. And sometimes you have to just. Uh, that's right. Too short of a selection. Sometimes you have to just. You know, take what you can get on your cleanup. Is he dog? Is he dog? I'm gonna take this little bit out. Is he dog? Is he dog? Dog. Uh. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So better, maybe a little too too much, too little too processed, but just for the sake of showing you how it can be done, let's listen to the before. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and the after the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog so huge improvement in the bag sound with a slight degradation in actual sound quality uh is it worth it that's kind of up to you that's up to the director definitely keep the original version always so that the choice can be made because if you just clean it up then you've made the choice and you can't really go back i think i'm I'm going to skip paper because it's pretty much the same as the bag. It's just a different frequency range. So let me actually delete that, move these back. Just because I don't want this to be like a three hour video. Buttons. Let's listen to these buttons. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. That sounds almost like a guitar pedal. Uh, because it is. Individual files. Clip by clip. One kind of... Uh, irritating thing is Pro Tools does not remember <laughs> these settings. So if you're working on a dialogue edit that takes you five to six days, which is about what we get for a 44 minute episode of TV show, every time you open your session, these will be reset. And I don't know that there's any way around that. Even if you save it in a template, it doesn't matter. It just goes back. So that's, that's still annoying. But anyways, let's clean up these buttons. Send it. Great. The quick brown fox. Now these buttons are short. They I might be able to get these out with the click. The quick brown. The 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 off of the button has a resonance, but the on does not. So it goes chung kang chung kang, and the kang has well, it has a kang on it. The quick brown fox. So let's split this into signals. We're gonna deal with the transients first. The quick brown. I should be able to declick this, so I'm just gonna hit one to declick. The quick brown, the quick brown. See how I'm I'm not doing this and declicking because what's gonna happen to the B on brown, and the Q and the K on quick? They're gonna go away. The quick brown fox jump. So I'm just gonna take fox jumped over the bad stuff out, not everything else. Fox jumped over the lake. Jumped over the. Jumped over. The jumped over the. Jumped over the. Over the lazy, over the lazy dog, dog. Well, I was, I gave it a couple at the end there. Dog, dog. Now I want to be careful on that G again. Dog. So this is a G, I believe. Might be a messy G. The dog. Yeah. Okay, so I've gotten the transients out. I'm breaking this signal into two pieces: transients and tonal. So I've got the transients out. The quick breath. Now I can try, 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 try to get out the the rest of it. The quick brown, the quick brown. So I'm gonna bring up my deconstruct again, and I just want to get the tonal stuff out. So I'm gonna hit five. The quick brown fox. What is this? The quick brown fox. Quick brown. Quick brown fox. That's a quick brown fox. That's a nice key. quick brown. Okay, we'll keep that. Quick brown. Maybe not. The quick brown. Let me just cut it out and see what happens. The quick brown fox. Oh, don't need it. You can also do command X to cut, but it'll leave a hole there. So I like to grab some good stuff and just go paste it. The quick brown fox. Quick brown. Quick brown fox. I'm just using spectral repair attenuate. So I'll bring this so you can watch. The quick brown. The quick quick brown fox. Quick brown fox jump. Fox jumped over. Fox jumped over. And I know I'm probably not going to be able to get 
Uh, so I'm going to highlight these frequencies on the Kang and do 5, which is deconstruct. I know I'm not going to be able to get it out 100%. It, I mean, you can, but it's going to sound terrible. So just try to get it to where it sounds good. Fox jumped over. The Fox jumped. This looks like one too. Fox jumped over the Fox jumped over the Fox jumped over the Fox jumped over the Fox over the Fox jumped over the lazy. That's a T. Jumped over the lazy. Jumped over the lazy. Jumped over the lazy dog. Jumped over the lazy dog. Jumped over the lazy. Okay, I took out the V. Jumped over the lazy. Don't want to do that. Jumped over the lazy dog. Over the lazy dog. 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 I can just spectral those Dog. out and tone will reduce. Dog. 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 What happens if I take that out? Dog. Nope. Dog. 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 Okay. Dog. 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 Fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So you see that B is still in there. If I would have de-clicked it, that B would be gone. Brown fox. You could do the restore to initial state, but I like doing it by hand just because I can be specific. So I'm sending it back. Sorry I didn't narrate the whole thing. I wanted you guys to hear. Here's the before and after on the buttons. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. That was before, here's after. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So again, it's not completely gone. And that's kind of the key with a lot of this stuff is it's very likely that it's never going to be 100% removed. But if you can get it 80% removed, that's usually enough. For this clapping, broadband hand clapping, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over. At least I'm speaking loudly. Um, let's try. Well, hmm. There's a couple things we could do here. One very interesting tool to use for this is music rebalance. And Isotope gives you all kinds of stuff. If you're doing audio post, you'll probably never use it. But you can find cool ways to use it if you want. So I like music rebalance. It's a very interesting tool uh, and you can actually split out stems from like two track mixes. It's just, it comes in handy when you don't expect it. On this, let's try taking the percussion, which hand clapping is a percussion instrument. Let's try taking that down. All right, let's see what that did. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox. No, it sounds like a robot clapping, which is not what we want. So let's try instead just doing, oops, not de clip, de click. Uh, let's turn the sensitivity down. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over. So it pushed the clapping back by taking the transient off. Here's a before. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox. So it did it did improve it, um, but you still have the reverb of the clap in there. And I know for sure it took off some of the, the plosives or, or the transients, but just for the sake of time, we're not gonna worry about that. The quick. Now I'm gonna go through and spectral repair. The quick brown. The quick brown. So I'm just hitting three on the keyboard, but it's all it's doing is attenuating using these settings. Brown fox. There's a big one. Fox. Fox jumped over. Fox jumped. Fox jumped over. Jumped over. Jumped over the lake. Over the. Over the lake. So doing the um, the the cleanup in multiple passes over the lazy duck maybe relying on like an automatic one where you highlight the whole thing and then go back and clean up clean up the cleanup lazy duck can get you a way better result than just stacking automatic plugins lazy duck because lazy duck it's human lazy duck there's some art to it lazy duck it's not the just quick 
AI computerized, you know, synthesis. It's like you're actually using your brain power to make decisions. Uh, okay. The quick brown, which is what's going to make people hire you again and again. It's not how well you can use these automatic tools. It's is your decision making process sound. So let's process. You'll see the waveform change pretty dramatically. Uh, here's a before on the clapping. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And after. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So you could still hear it back there, way in the background. If you really spent the time to go over each individual clap and resynthesize stuff, you could definitely get it better. Um, but for a YouTube video, we're not going to do that. Moving on to mouth clicks, and uh, I think there's a couple plosives in this. Let's just go ahead and send it to RX and give it a listen. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's two of them, but that, that's enough. So there's some plosives. There's one audible plosive. This one is like low enough to where you can't really hear it. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. At least I can't on my headphones. On the uh, big monitors, you probably hear that. But this one is, you can hear the breath going across the diaphragm. The quick brown. On quick. It's like a breath pop. The quick brown. A couple ways you can deal with that. Uh, you can deplosive the whole track. I don't like to do that just because it takes away stuff that I don't, I don't know if I want it gone. Another thing you can do. There shouldn't be anything down here that I want to keep, so just easy is copy, paste. The quick brown fox. It's gone. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So I'd probably do that. You could deplosive just this, and it'll kind of do the same thing. So let's just go with that. The quick. The real problem with this, and uh, I I don't get asthma. Like I don't understand why people listen to it. I've heard I've heard about the tingly stuff, but it's just. It's creepy and gross. So if if you're listening to this for that, um, just turn just turn the video off. It's I don't want to even. In fact, I don't want to think about it anymore. That's just weird. Um, but so, anyways, this there's a lot of clicks, mouth clicks because it's it's whispered. Anytime you have somebody using a lower volume voice you're going to get these mouth clicks that seem to be more pronounced. Or if you have them right up on the mic, same thing happens. If, if they're yelling and they're like three feet back from the mic, probably no mouth clicks because the signal to noise, meaning the voice versus the mouth clicks is like huge, like 40, 60 dB. But once people start to go really low with their volume and they get dramatic or they whisper and the mic gets really close, that's when the clicks become very prominent because the clicks are always there but once the signal level decreases the clicks become like in comparison much louder so how do we deal with these clicks what i wouldn't do is go for mouth declick because like this b the quick brown or even the 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 quick that's a nice sharp Transient on the, that's a nice sharp transient on brown. That's the B for brown. The quick brown fox jump. But like there's clicks in here. See these little, let me bring this scale up and you can start to see. Here's a click, here's a click, here's a click, here's two clicks. Here's here's some bunch of clicks right here. Over. Like a whole family of them hanging out there. So I want to get rid of those, but I don't want to get rid of. Jumped over. Jumped the PT sound and the B sound, like all that is good stuff. I don't want to hurt that stuff. And if you use mouth declick, even on like conservative settings, it's going to take that stuff away. So watch what it does. Where's that B? Brown the quick brown you can hear the low frequencies on the B, but that nice sharp B sound. Quick brown fuck. Brown fuck. It's gone. I don't I don't want to do that. That is the opposite of what I want to do, which is I want to improve the clarity and declicking stuff, declicking a whole, you know, file even hurts the clarity of the person that's talking because you're not being specific about what you want people to hear. You're just saying, oh, there's clicks. 
Now there's no more clicks, but there's still clicks. Round five. Hear all those? Round five. They're still there. Fox. You just took away the good stuff. Best thing to do on this type of uh, problem, if you have to batch process stuff, use Decrackle. Some of the best dialogue editors I've worked with, like Super Pro, you know, high end, they'll use Decrackle before they'll use any other declicking type of deal. Still, if you use this, just, you know, I use a high quality setting, low strength and low amplitude, low amplitude skew. But if you, if you do that, see, it still cuts into the B. It left more of it. It left especially more of like the low frequency stuff. And it did get rid of the, the mouth clicks, but at the expense of clarity. So here's a no processing. Here's a decrackle processing. Let's just listen to this. Let's start it right here. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Okay, so that's that's raw, and then here's with the decrackle. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So it took like 80% of the clicks away. It did take away the B and the some of the other nice uh, sharp consonants. So I guess what you could do, if you had more clicks than consonants, you could do decrackle and then just go in here. Quick brown. And like on the B on brown, you could do your restore selection. Brown fox jumped over, jumped over the lazy dog. And that would kind of fix that. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Like that's going to be your fastest way is, is listen to it. Make sure you get a, a sound memory of what it sounds like and note like, hey, this B is a really good consonant. If you have to process the whole thing, go for it, but then put the B back. Put the bunny back because you have to increase clarity, not decrease it. So let's just... The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. We'll just leave it at that. That's good. I'd say I, I approve that. And you can see, you know, you can see here, there, these ones are still here. I gave you some of those as like, if you, you know, wanted to really practice. Yuck, nasty, nasty. It, it got rid of the click part, but not the mushy part. So, but we'll call that good enough for now. Okay, next up, we have a mic bump. Very simple thing. Of course, I closed my plugin again. Uh, Please fix that isotope. Every video I use this, I'm just gonna ask isotope, please fix this to where it remembers. All my other plugins remember individual files clip by clip. This is the one that doesn't, and it's the one I use the most. So it would say it'd probably save me like years by the time I got through. So, mic bumps. Let's listen to this in isotope. This is a huge mic bump. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Like I smacked the crap out of my mic for this. And it did uh, clicks, it did nice low frequencies. It actually took away what I was saying. Uh, how are we going to use this? Is this salvageable? Brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Well, like everything else, you have to split the problem into its components. So the first component we have to me is these clicks. Let's deal with these clicks first. I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to use declick. Breaking my own rule. It took away everything. Fox jumped over the so we don't want to do that. Okay, we tried it. Is there some clicks we could use it on? This is the S. See, the S is all busted up. So if we declick that, that's why it's taking that away. It's seeing each of those good things as a, as a click, and we don't want to do that. So instead, let's just take away these. I know these ones are bad. This one's going to be bad. We do have some low clicks. We can take those away. Let me bring this scale down because that bump is louder than the, the whispered sound bite we have. I should be able to... Let me try using Deplosive on this. That might be a good, good one to try. Not, not quite. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I could try... Spectral Repair Attenuate. Again, on low stuff, for whatever reason, 
spectral repair doesn't work that great, but I've got this little piece of tone here. I'm going to copy that. And because it's whispered, I don't have to worry too much about low frequency stuff. So I'm going to fill paste. I'm going to declick. I'm going to do fill paste again. Fox jumped. No, that's too much. Fox jumped. Go back. Declick that. Fill paste. Let's do a little more. Fox. And now I'm left with this mid bass. Brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Yeah, boom. That's a kind of a cool sound. Fox jumped over the lazy. That took out a little too much. Let's try just spectral repair. Let's try spectral repair replace. Oh, vertical. I always forget. That doesn't work. Let's try replace. Nope. That grabs way too much above and below. So instead, I'll take a different piece of fill. Fox jumped, Fox jumped over the lazy dog. Got some clicks to take care of Fox. now. That's right, I need to change this click to low frequencies. Fox jumped over the jumped over the Fox jumped over. Click that. Let me spectral repair that. Fox jumped over. Jumped over. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We have these little dropouts from the mic rattling. So let me get this click out of here. Oh, that didn't work. No, that's not gonna work. What we've got to do here is use a tool. You could try to use spectral repair, replace, but I found interpolate works much better for these short little dropouts. I'm gonna change my selection to be full band just a time selection, and I'm gonna render that, and render that, and this is looking on both sides to fill in this gap. Uh, let's see what it sounds like. Fox jumped over the lazy dog. Quick brown fox jumped over, fox jumped over. We still got some stuff up here. I'll go ahead and fill this in with a uh, spectral repair replace. And we've got this guy. I'm gonna copy, paste, paste. Jumped over the lazy fox. Jumped. I think I have feather selection on. Three milliseconds. Fox jumped over. The fox jumped over the lazy fox. Jumped over. There's still some weird stuff going on down here. Let's see what happens if I do a spectral repair replace. Fox jumped over the lazy dog. Fox jumped. Over. Fox jumped. Over. Fox. Jumped over the jumped over, jumped over. I'm just copying and pasting. Fox jumped over the lake. I'm going too fast. The fox jumped over the lake. Fox jumped over. There's these little guys right here. How am I gonna get those out? Uh, like that. This is spectral repair replace. Fox jumped over the fox jumped. Fox jumped over the lake. Nope, too much. Fox jumped over the I I Try to get this out and put it back because it took away some of the, uh, you know, this is like 500 to 1K. I don't want to take that away if I don't have to. Fox jumped over the lazy dog. Fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Hmm. It's getting close. Quick brown fox jumped over the lazy No. Nope. Brown fox jumped over the lazy fox jumped over the lazy That might be as close as I can get it. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Let me get this breath pop out of here. Oops. Uh, good piece of fill. Copy, paste. Jumped over the lazy. Jumped over the lazy dog. Okay. Good uh, example of. Well, is this possible to save? And let's see. Here's the original. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And here's the cleaned up. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Totally usable. Nice, clean, not too processed. If you tried to do this with any kind of automatic, you know, one and done plugin, it would not do that. Last thing is something I've had to clean up um, a lot. This this one show for Fox, they shoot on location a lot. There's uh, emergency vehicles and construction because it's in Los Angeles. So these backup beeps. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Terrible, terrible beeps. Can't use that.
But the nice thing about things like this or even uh, police sirens is they're tonal and they're generally fairly limited on harmonics. This one actually is pretty gnarly. Um, but sometimes dehum actually works on this stuff. Let's see if, if dehum works on these beeps. No. Like I said, sometimes. If I crank this up, it would probably start to get it. Nope. Well, actually, it did. It did, like, in the voice, but it's going to sound terrible. The quick brown fox yeah. jumped over the... Not good enough. Not good enough. So we're going to do it the hard way. Uh, what you can do on this, most of the time, is highlight like this. Uh, what's the command for select harmonics? Shift command H. So shift command H. Let's see if it nabs these harmonics. One, two, three, four. Let's go all the way up. Yeah, we're gonna have to go all the way up. Actually, there's like another one up there. So that's this little guy here. And then I'm going to use deconstruct. I really like deconstruct because it splits the signal. And you can say, I only want to bring it down like 6 dB or 20 dB. For stuff like this, I'll, I'll bring it down pretty far. Mm, close. Do it again. Let's see what that does. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick. So we got this click sound. The quick. I was just playing this off of like soundly, I think. The quick brown. So. Quick brown fox jumped over. This one needs to go bye bye, so I'm gonna hit five. Fox jumped over. See, the shortcuts help so much because you can literally fox. just like buzz fox through the jump. file and find problems and then just. Your fingers will remember like, oh yeah, five is deconstruct. So let me highlight deconstruct. Fox jumped over the lazy dog. Jumped over the lazy. Over the lazy. There's a. Over the little click. Jumped there. over the lazy dog. There's another little click there before dog. Lazy dog. Lazy. Lazy dog. The lazy dog. I'm actually gonna, gonna copy this piece and do that. Lazy dog. Lazy dog. Spectral on that, not really working. Dog. 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 The quick brown fox. The quick. The quick brown fox. I'm going to use deconstruct on this piece. The quick brown fox jumped over the brown fox. Got a little extra on there. Brown fox. A little extra there. Brown fox jumped over the fox. Jumped over fox. Jumped over. Not sure what that is. Fox jumped over the lazy dog. Jumped over. The jumped over the lazy dog. Jumped over the lazy dog. Lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy brown fox. Jumped over. There's a little fox tick of this. The beep starting. Fox jumped. I think it's this. Fox jumped over. Nope, it's not. It's this. Fox jumped over. Yeah, it's right there. Fox jumped over the. Jumped over. Maybe it's all of it. Nope. Fox jumped over. Fox jumped. Over. Fox jumped over the lazy. Fox jumped over the lazy dog. Jumped over the lazy. Over the lazy. Over the lazy dog. Man, this one I can just spectral that out. <laughs> That's me hitting play. On the beep. The beep won't have that click, probably, because it's going to be far away. But The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. All right, I'll take this little click out, too. Lazy dog. Okay, send it back, render it. Uh, let's do before and after on the beeps. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And after. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So, if you've made it this far in the video, first of all, congratulations.
because I know this is probably going to be a super long video. Uh, and there's, it's, it's very tedious to do this kind of cleanup. Everybody wants that one button, you know, click, just highlight like the whole thing and click and it gets cleaned up and I'm sure AI will get us there eventually. But the art that comes with dialogue editing is in making the decisions of what to clean up and what to not clean up versus just being a button masher that just sends everything to isotope and declick and dialogue isolate. It, it, you, if you do that, you end up with a very processed track that takes away from the actor's performance. So be specific and use the right tool for the right job. Like don't just use dialogue isolate on everything. Don't don't batch process stuff through absentia um, if you can skip that because if you take the time to treat each of these problems with the care and attention that it needs, your work is going to sound better. You're going to be preserving the performance of the actors and the director will, even if they don't notice it, like subconsciously, they're going to appreciate the, the um, craft that goes into your dialogue edit. A lot of people look at dialogue editing as just a technical you know, process stuff and ship it out. The fun stuff is sound effects and mixing and and Foley and, you know, like, yeah, those are fun, but dialogue editing is such a specialized skill that if you learn how to do things the right way, it's easier to find work because people don't have the patience and the skill to do detailed editing like this. They just want to batch process stuff and move on. So if if you want to be a pro dialogue editor or you just want your own stuff to sound, you know, professional, if you want it to sound clean but not overprocessed, this is the way to go about it. It's using the different tools in Isotope for, you know, specific things, but also learning how to use some of the tools like Deconstruct, which I'm sure when Isotope made this module, they didn't expect it to be used in the way that I use it. And you'll find the same with other things. Um, you know, you can try like spectral recovery or I know some people like guitar denoise for, for static hums. So don't be afraid to experiment with stuff. Definitely set up shortcuts in preferences so that you can map out your most used modules to the right keys. Um, and then the other thing is just save a copy of your work. Because like we saw with this plate where we took out the plate, and then we put the plate back in, sometimes you'll want to put things back in. So learning how to use D-bleed to get like just the plate on this is a really good thing to practice. And I think what I'll do is I'll actually, I'll export these files so that you guys can download them to practice on. So I'll uh, post a link in the description for how to access that. That way you've got some material to work on if you don't have any, um, and you can practice these skills. If you do a better job than me, Hit me up, post a video on YouTube. Say, hey Tom, I cleaned up the like mouth clicks way better than you did, and and I will applaud you for that for having the patience uh, to do that on a YouTube video. But for now, that's it for uh, this video. It's been long enough, and I'm gonna sign off. I'll see you guys next time.